got through the entire 14 entries for the journal and half the exam is pretty much over with, now comes the part of laying it out as an accountant would. So we've got our general entry and we're going to use the question number three as the example. We had office supplies of 25000 is actually office supplies expense of 25000 and accounts payable 25000 So what you're going to do is take these entries and you're going to post them to the general ledger. Now some of them may already be posted for you depending on uh, how much time we have, but you're going to refer to question number three so that we know where this number is coming from. And on the ledger, if you'll recall, we had all the debits, all the credit transactions that have happened to come up with a balance. So in this case, there was only one transaction, and it was a debit. So it's still on the debit side of office supplies. If for some reason we had another transaction that reduced office supplies, we might credit it. But that's not the case here. We just have the one transaction. Um, so we add up the debits, subtract out the credits. If the debit side is more, which it is here, we record a balance of $25,000 on the debit side. Just a quick example again. If for some reason we had another entry out there that may have reduced office supplies through a credit of $5,000, then we would have had a $20,000 balance that would be a debit uh, amount. So with our $25,000 debit balance that we have on our ledger, we're going to go over to our trial balance, and the trial balance is going to have cash and everything else, plus office supplies expense is going to be listed there. So we look at our office supply expense ledger, just like we would look at cash and all the other ledger accounts that you've got, and we see that it's a debit for $25,000. So we're going to see the debit column and put $25,000. Some people make the mistake of if we had $5,000 over here, they would have put $5,000 here and bring $5,000 here. No, no, no. It's a balance, which means we only take the net of those transactions and bring it over here. So in the scenario where it was the $5,000 going out or $20,000, we would have brought $20,000 over as the debit. All right? So you've got to make sure that when you add these debits and credits, you only put a number on one side or the other, and then you carry that over to the trial balance to the correct side, debit or credit, for there. Because there should only be one amount on either side. Then at the bottom, all of these accounts should equal each other. So whatever you get here for debits should equal the amount you have on credits. Think about it. Every transaction we did over here, debits equaled credits. If you carried it properly through the ledger, it's going to be equal on your trial balance also. Finally, the last step of the exam before ratios is posting all of these to either a balance sheet or an income statement. So, for example, cash would go to our balance sheet because it's an asset. We remember that from the beginning. But in our example here, office supplies expense was an income statement item. So, it will go on our income statement as an expense. Revenues less expenses equals our net income. And if you all remember, one very important step in this is that balance sheet's going to have a retained earnings number. That retained earnings number is some prior balance that we had from before. So we have to remember to take this net income amount that we finally get from our income statement and change that retained earnings balance. If we have income, it's going to make it go up. If we have a loss, it's going to make it go down. So that's how we carry our journal entries to the ledger, figure out a total, 
posted on one side or the other of the trial balance, and then carry it over to our balance sheet and income statement, closing that net income out to retained earnings. And that's the flow, and next I'll talk about ratios, the final step in the print exam.